video, I hope to clear up some apparent confusion concerning the use of the punctuated name in a sentence and also the use of the underline, i.e. the bottom line, in a sentence, which, for those of you out there wondering, I have definitely given closure to on multiple occasions and in multiple different videos on this channel. Be that as it may, I know that it's difficult to sift through all 800 or 900 videos on this channel, so because it's a question that has, is fresh in the minds of at least a few students, I'll address it here in a fresh video to give you a fresh look at it. So you can see this very simple sentence right here. For this claim of the correctness is with the name, Jason Matthew Glass by the contract writ. You see all the punctuations here. We have a comma, we have a hyphen, full colon, and a couple more hyphens. We have our cause for this claim. Four is the positional, one of four positionals, four of, with, and by, that is the cause of the sentence, and that fact is claim, which is singular, which means the verb of the thinking is going to be singular, because the cause is singular, and then we have the concern of the correctness, because of serves the function of concern, is the verb of the thinking moving the cause and concern into the possessive, with the, with is possessive, it's a positional, with the name, comma, space, and then you see Jason hyphen Matthew, which when you see a hyphen, that means it's a compound fact. This seven, Jason, is brought together with this seven, Jason, and then that would be a seven in and of itself. And then we have a colon. Now, if you're familiar with what I like to call correct sentence structure shorthand, the colon is representative of position lodial phrases. It could either be for the, of the, with the, or by the. So what would it be in this case? Well, if we're looking at this, it says is with the, that's possessive, comma, space. So then you would think, well, it probably means of the because we've already used with the, but hold on, there's a comma here. So commas are used to group facts. As we all know, with correct sentence structure, one and one is one. One word, one meaning, one function, one congruency. So a comma would not group position lodial fact phrases, it would only group facts. Name is a fact. Jason hyphen Matthew is a fact. Well, what is that then? Why is there a position lodial phrase in here? That's kind of confusing things. And then to finish it off, we have by the contract writ. So what we can do for ease of the communication is to go in and underline, first of all, the compound facts. There's one. And there's one. but we still have the issue of this colon. Now, the hyphen, as I said before, the hyphen brings two sevens together, two or more sevens together, like there's three here, to form one singular fact, one singular seven. So by the contract writ would be five, six, seven. This whole thing would be a seven because it's a compound fact. But what about this colon? Well, if you think about what a hyphen means, a hyphen forms compound knowns, compound facts. So what does the underline do? The bottom line. I'm glad you asked. Because the bottom line, when utilized in this manner, means that whatever is underlined is to be taken as a whole. So we have this compound fact, this position lodial phrase, and this fact. All of this is now to be taken as a whole. 
So when you syntax this for this claim, 567, of the correctness, 567 is 2 with the name 567, comma, space, Jason, I have Matthew, Cole, and Glass, this whole thing would be a 7 because it's been underlined. And then 567. See what I'm talking about? That's how it is used because now, since you've underlined this, or since I've underlined this, this colon is part of this whole entire fact, and it does not affect the concatenation of the positionals. You still have for the, of the, with the, by the. And this is to be taken as a whole. So if you were to syntax all of that, as I showed you, five, six, seven, five, six, seven, two, five, six, seven, seven, five, six, seven. There you have it. And then someone asked me, well, how can you underline the full colon here, but you wouldn't underline it here? Again, their question was, why wouldn't you underline this full colon when you are underlining this full colon? For the same reason that you wouldn't underline this by the contract writ. Why would you underline that? That's not part of the fact. Even if you were to take this out and write it in shorthand, which would mean the colon would have to be tied up against the C in contract, you would not underline that because that's not part of that fact. The way this full colon is part of this name, which is to be taken as one whole fact. Do you see what I'm saying? I mean, forgive this spacing because I just erased this in the platform I'm using. I'm not going to erase this whole thing, in, but this, if it were to be on paper, would be over here. But let's just take that out and just flip back to buy the. You would not underline this. You would not underline this. This is for the, and then the underline starts, Jason hyphen Matthew colon glass, and then the underline stops, and then the period comes, which brings a full stop to the sentence. Just like you would not underline that period because that period brings this claim to a full stop. If you were to underline it, now it's not bringing the sentence to a full stop. And for, let's, let's put an abbreviation in here to show you the mechanics of the underline in the period when it's in the middle of a sentence. So now the sentence is, for this claim of the correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar is with the name Jason hyphen Matthew colon glass by the contract writ. So you see I've underlined this abbreviation. The abbreviation means correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar. You see there's a period after C, after S, after S, after C, after P, after S, and after G. But this period after the G is underlined. And the reason being is that if it was not underlined, then it would bring the sentence to a stop after that. And then it wouldn't be a sentence, would it? So that's why you would underline that if it comes in the sentence. But the final period would not be underlined. Here's something else for you. You 
You see now I put the abbreviation, correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar at the end. And when you underline that, you would not underline that full stop. Otherwise, it's not going to be a full stop to the sentence. So now you have the period serving as a full stop for each of these representative letters that represent a word, correct, sentence, structure. You're bringing a full stop to those things within this compound fact. And then the final one comes at the end. It is not underlined because it brings this whole thought to an end, just like this period brings this to an end, this name. Well, folks, that's about as clear as I can put it. You're more than welcome to go and check out those other dozens of videos where I've explained this exact same thing using different wording. Uh, but this is as clear and as concise as I can get it. So I hope it helps you out. And uh, stay tuned for information on how you can apply for a correct sentence structure workshop. Thank you. If you'd like to learn correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar, Contact me at the email address listed at the bottom of your screen. I will set up a 10 to 15 minute video consultation between you and me. You can ask me whatever you like and I'll do the same and we'll see if this is something that uh, you're prepared to commit to. Thank you again and I'll see you in the next one.